Okay, my friends, here it is. The long-awaited and much-requested video on how to make fish hydrolysate, the fast fish fertilizer. So you've watched my other video already about how to make the J-Dom fish fertilizer with the bucket and the leaf mold. You've already made that, but that takes between three and six months at least before it's really effectively usable, preferably a year. The J-Dom fish fertilizer you make now for next season, okay? Because that's really the best, and that's in a class all of its own. But in the meantime, we can make this fish hydrolysate that I'm about to show you how to make, which is ready in two weeks, okay? So I'm gonna say a few words about it first uh, because this is a little bit more involved and a little bit more shocking to a lot of people, what you're about to see. So just brace yourself, okay, and, and listen. So I've been talking with a lot of you and a lot of you are using fish fertilizer, but you're unaware that it is an inferior product because there's two types of fish fertilizers fish emulsion and fish hydrolysate emulsion is made by grinding up a bunch of fish heating it to a super high temperature to kill all the bacteria and enzymes and everything that's alive extracting the oils for fish supplements and for for other things cosmetics and then extracting the pulp which is the the fish muscles the proteins and using that for animal feed and then what's left is this sort of dead depleted slurry that they have to add enzymes and stuff like that too that's fish emulsion okay which is still beneficial for your plants but in, it doesn't even begin to compare to something like fish hydrolysate which is made as you'll see by grinding up fish and adding a certain type of microorganism and that is the lactic acid bacteria from the previous uh, couple videos ago, I showed you how to make the lactic acid bacteria serum. That is a prerequisite to this because we are gonna add that into this mixture along with another ingredient and that is going to lower the pH and control the ferment. So, okay, so we have to use it like this. And that is gonna give us a really balanced, really um, nutritionally intact source of nutrients for the plants because it hasn't been heated, it hasn't been destroyed, nothing's been removed, it's the real deal. All of it okay so let me just show you how to make it we'll go into the kitchen uh, don't be grossed out this is natural stuff okay this is how we learn to make our own stuff to grow our own food and then after that I will uh, show you how to use it okay okay first step is to acquire some fish the fresher the better now I am using two bass that I got from a local pond out in the country uh, you can use whatever kind of fish you have access to ocean fish is best uh, but if you don't have an ocean, then river or pond fish will work. Then we want to cut up the whole fish. We use the whole fish. A lot of people say, why don't you eat it first and then just use what's left? Well, I say that we are eating it actually, just through a different route. This is growing food for us. So we are eating this entire fish, all parts of it. Put the whole thing in there. Just chop up the bones real nice and fine so that, uh, it, you know, see even there, the eggs. You, you want all the good stuff in the blender. So don't throw anything out, just chop it up nice and fine. Put the whole thing in there. I ended up using two medium-sized fish because we want to fill the blender two-thirds full with fish. If you're using smaller fish, you can just put the whole thing in there. That's fine. And then we want to fill it uh, halfway or so with rainwater or dechlorinated water of whatever kind. We don't want to use tap water for this because tap water has got chemicals designed to kill microorganisms. So we use uh, chlorine free water of whatever source. Now just blend it up and you want it to get to a decent consistency. This is too thick where it doesn't move. So now I'm gonna put in some more water like this and we're gonna blend it up until it's nice and gelatinous, kind of soupy. Blend it up as best you can, but don't be too concerned about every tiny little morsel. It'll decompose anyways. Now once it's like to this consistency, now we will pour the blender full into a uh, five gallon bucket. Yes, I'm doing it inside. I know normally you wouldn't do it inside, but I had to make the sacrifice for you guys so I could film it. Okay, now we're going to use the same container and fill it again full of rainwater. And this time we're going to add two cups of unsulfured molasses. The molasses is going to act as a micronutrient supplement with lots of minerals in it. It's also going to supercharge the bacteria in this brew. It's completely different from the J. Dom brew, so make this separately so that you have both the J. Dom brew and this brew. But to finish making this brew, blend up the molasses into the water, and then once it's nice and frothy, pour it into the 
uh, bucket with the fish. So in the bucket now, we have one blender full of fish and one blender full of molasses water. Now we are going to put an additional two blenderfuls of rainwater into the bucket. So a total of four uh, blenders worth of liquid are in the bucket. Now we are going to add one cup of the lactic acid bacteria serum, which you learned how to make from a previous video of mine. We're going to add one cup into the five gallon bucket and mix it together really well. Once it's nice and mixed together, now here, listen up. These microbes are conditionally anaerobic, so it doesn't matter if it's aerobic or anaerobic. They will survive just the same and do their job. Personally, I use a homemade airlock with a tight-fitting lid because it keeps the smell under control and it keeps the critters away. But you could likewise just fasten a piece of fabric over the top, a real fine mesh piece of fabric to keep the insects out. Always label your ferments, otherwise you will not remember. Then just place in an area out of direct sunlight where it will not be disturbed. Okay, and you're just going to leave that for between two and four weeks depending on your temperature. That has to do with the speed at which it decomposes and ferments. So between 75 and 85 is the sweet spot. All right, don't let it get too hot or too cold because we are culturing specifically this type of lactobacilli bacteria. And they are going to consume the sugars in the molasses and the proteins and amino acids in the fish and the fats and all of that, the minerals, and they are going to digest all of that. And the byproduct from that is what's going to be available to the plant. Because remember, the plant can never absorb uh, a fish or compost or manure or whatever it is. It all must pass first through the digestive systems of microorganisms. So we're just getting ahead of the game and doing that beforehand. Then uh, strain it out. See, this is stuff I made earlier this spring. It has a nice, rich, dark color to it. The foam up top because it's got a low pH and a high bricks content. So we're going to give it a smell. It's really inviting. It doesn't smell putrid at all. It almost smells like you want to drink it, you know, but you don't. Don't. And uh, yeah, we're going to strain it through the cheesecloth, put it in the thing. It'll stay sh shelf stable for quite some time. And then we're going to use that at one ounce a gallon. We're going to spray it on the leaves at nighttime. Only do this going into the evening. Don't ever spray anything on the leaves in the daytime. We're going to spray it on the leaves. Also drench the soil with it once a week, maybe uh, once every other week. And the plants are going to love you for it. Just watch how they perk up. And the soil biology, this is really good for fungal activity as well. The fungi love to eat this type of fish proteins. Okay? So there you have it, my friends. That's the fish hydrolysate. You can make it in two weeks. If you get, gain something from this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, uh, check out the link uh, in the description. There's all kinds of links now. And uh, if you would wish to make a financial contribution to my PayPal account, that would be awesome. I would appreciate that. Helps inspire me to keep making these videos. The link is in the description. I'll see you next video.